Mommy, when's the prince gonna talk? The exorcists are coming too, right? I'm sure they will, dear. People are saying it's going to be a very important announcement about the Abbey. I want to see the exorcists! We need to thank them for saving us from the demons! You're right. We all have to show them our gratitude and help them however we can. Yeah! I'll follow the rules, too. I won't be selfish. They sure are popular. Because these people don't know the truth. You think that's so? That the exorcists are fighting the demons they themselves cannot. That's why the people support the exorcists. <laughs> Sure have these folks in line. Subjects, may I have your attention? It is I, Percival Asgard, Crown Prince of the Midgand Empire. His Majesty, my father, and I are pleased to celebrate with you on this auspicious day. The ceremony started. It will be impossible to slip in now. After the opening, ten years ago, our kingdom faced an existential threat, both from demons and the terrible spread of demon light. However, one man raised a miraculous sword and stood so that the body and soul of the land Over there. would not be you lost. You can climb up if you want, but attacking now would and be suicide. And the name of that man was Artorius <laughs> Colbrand! Artorius! 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 Trust are unfamiliar with Artorius' noble act. To bring us salvation from demons, he sacrificed everything. But he's a murderer. He called Lord Inominat, one of the five Imperiums, and blessed us with the strength of the Malachim. But he's a murderer! He serves as a shining beacon of reason in this world of turmoil. And reason is what binds us. But you killed him. You took everything that I loved. So raise your voices in praise to Artorius' devoted work, to the Savior who purifies evil and guides our flock. Let us call him our Shepherd. Shepherd Artorius. Even though the world was filled with suffering, I had to ask something tremendous of you all. I entrusted you to endure the pains of reason. I asked you to bind yourselves with shackles of your own will. For the only blade that can expel calamity is one forged from unshaking reason and the iron will to do what must be done. And now that very blade stands ready before all of us today. I offer my body and my life in service to the people of this great land. With the blessings of the Empyrean Innominat, I will guide you to a world without calamity. And this world's suffering will be nothing but a distant memory!
But you're the one who murdered. Fool, they'll see us. You're the one who killed Luffy said. What? The Shepherd Artorius. That's who you're after? Oh, and here I was hoping you'd just straight up pounce on him. That would be certain death. No, I need a sword of reason and will. That's the only thing that can kill him. Killing Lord Artorius. Playing it safe? Boring! Regrettably, it is at this juncture we go our separate ways. I've got a bit of hunting to do. No one's stopping you. Goodbye. Farewell! May your days be fruitful and your nights tormented! If our enemy's calling himself a shepherd, he won't be going into hiding. Let's take this slowly. The old man behind him. Melchior, I take it? Yeah. Let's gather information on these people. If we know what they're planning, we can find a weakness. They're the most powerful men in the land. If we're going to look into them, we need a lead first. Aizen, do you have any underworld contacts in the capital itself? Like your friend at the port? I don't go inland much, I'm afraid. But Eifried has close ties to a shadow guild. A tavern in the city, run by an old man called Baskerville, serves as a front for them. A shadow guild? Those sorts of things actually exist? Uh. <laughs> that settles it. Let's head to that tavern. They'll have food, I'm sure. Why not? My stomach made a weird noise. That's another sign that you're alive. The exorcists sure were out in full force to see the Shepherd's inauguration, weren't they? What about that guy you're after? Was he there? What, and have to stand around looking all proper? No, that's not his style. But I thought he was one of the top exorcists. That wouldn't matter to him. Huh. All right. Actually, Velvet, speaking of the Shepherd, I noticed he wasn't using his right arm. Was he hurt or something? Yeah. He was badly wounded a long time ago. He lost the use of his sword arm. That's what I figured. But don't get the wrong idea. He's still a master swordsman with his left arm. I can tell that from the way he moves. His movements are steady and measured, and his chi is centered below his navel. Huh? Why does that matter? Some people say that all the body's spiritual energy gathers in a place about two finger widths below the navel. Even when he appears to be in a state of total peace, his guard is never down. He's a formidable adversary. <laughs> and I think I know why my target has placed himself at Artorius's side. Because now I want to take Artorius down too.
What'll it be? Some food for the boy. Mabo curry is our specialty. It takes a week to stew properly. Mabo curry? Some of that, then. Say, do you know a man named Baskerville? I heard we might find him here. That old man? A scoundrel and criminal who went against the rules of the Abbey. They executed him long ago. Oh. Velvet! This Mabo curry is amazing! You get along so well. Is he your brother? No. No, he wouldn't be, would he? After all, your brother was murdered before your eyes. How do you know that? The shadows watch those who flinch from the light. So the guild is still active, even after Baskerville's arrest? That's right. Just like how Eifried's crew continues their piracy, even without their captain. So you're the contact? What may I help you with? I want to know what Artorius is planning. Information such as that? It won't come cheap. I have here a list of jobs. Not one remotely legal. Take care of all of them. And I'll tell you what you want to know. Take this with you as documentation. It's fake, but it's a good fake. It'll hold up to inspection. It's registered to Mogulu's Menagerie. Oh? Was that not the name you gave to the guard at the gate? I can see you're a group to be reckoned with. Report back here once you're finished. However, be aware that should you fail... Then this conversation never took place. Got it. I'll cause you no trouble. I appreciate your understanding. You're welcome to stay the night, free of charge. Forget about work until the morning comes. Right. You're missing Captain Eifried. The Captain has done much toward our viability. I promise that I'll share anything I hear about him for no charge. Thanks. All we know is there was a pendulum on the ground at the last place he was seen. And that Legate Melchior is connected to the Captain's disappearance. How? We don't know. Sounds like you've got problems of your own. Do you really have time to take on ours as well? I could ask you why you've tied yourself up with Velvet. Me? I've got a debt to repay. Without her, there's no way I'd have ever found my blade again. A demon repaying a debt? Ridiculous. As ridiculous as a pirate Moloch, you think? Hmm. No matter how you look at it, there's nothing reasonable about our rogue existence. And in this brave new world governed by reason, a rogue can either rage and become a monster like me, or... Or band together with others. Like a ship full of pirates, perhaps. Exactly. I admire Velvet's courage, squaring off against the whole world on her own. If you can accomplish that, it takes strength real strength, and I'm curious where it comes from. So you're doing it for yourself after all? Is that so wrong? <sighs> no. I'm the same. I need allies on my side, with the strength and courage to combat this so-called order imposed by the Abbey. 
But anyone who's willing to put up with the creed folly of Eifried's pirates has to be an even bigger fool than we are. So I'm like you. I want to know how deep her foolishness goes. She'd kill you if she heard that, you know. It's a compliment. Fools that big aren't born every day. Aha. Uh -huh. And I imagine your dear Captain Eifried's much the same. Aye. That man flies his fool flag proudly. The Shepherd Artorius, hmm? He's got the populace eating from the palm of his hand. I wonder... Hmm... Just how deeply will the fangs of our would-be tragic heroine scar this broken world of ours? I've got a traitor to find, but in the meantime, this should be a good show. Kind face for such a hard woman. She knew about me and our cover. She's got ears everywhere. And that's not all. She called the papers fake, but they're not. So she's got spies working on the inside, too. I heard that her predecessor, Baskerville, was a monument against authority. But to think he was executed. They've lost their leader, but remain unconquered. Not an organization to trifle with. That's how they have to be to take on the Abbey. We'd better succeed on our missions, and not just to get the information we need. Yeah. Besides, I'd like to get another of those drinks, too. You're a man of taste. That place always has the best. Uh, You'd better work hard, too, if you want more Mabo curry. I will. So, somebody means to ambush the Royal Medical Society on the Danan Highway. The Royal Medical Society is a group of doctors that travel around healing the sick. They're funded by donations given by ordinary folk. Hmm. Why would anyone attack them? Don't ask me. Some people are just twisted. And why would an underworld group defend them? Who knows? Something to do with the attackers, perhaps? Shepard! Savior of mankind who guides us through the darkness! What an appropriate title for Lord Artorius! I believe in him. As long as we have Shepherd Artorius, we'll make it through this era of disaster. Shepherd Artorius? How pompous can you get? Artorius has already seized control of all religious and secular power in Midgand. But now that he's taken on this new title, he's no longer just an authority figure. He's become the very hope of the masses. A dangerous opponent indeed. After seeing that, will you still fight him? Of course I will. He could be a god for all I care. I'll have my vengeance. No matter what.
dance ceremony was simply fantastic. Lord Artorius' speech was brilliant, of course, but Prince Percival was really something, too. He raises up Artorius to help the country and its people, then willingly steps down. Now that's what I call a king. You think so? Well, to me, he just looks like a wimp. He may look that way, but he has a great inner strength. He's excelled as a scholar and a leader since he was young. His only hobby is falconry, but sadly, I hear he hasn't had the time for it lately. You seem like a big supporter of his. Well, he's got two younger brothers, but just between you and me, they're dolts. Worse, they hang with a bad crowd. If anything were to happen to Prince Percival, the future of Midgand would be bleak. I see. So everyone's hopes are riding on him, then. Which means Midgan's vulnerable without him. He may be the Shepherd now, but no one knows who he was before the Advent, or what he did. No, they don't. But he showed up one day with a Malak in tow, routed the demons, and formed a band of skilled young exorcists. That sounds pretty suspicious. Right? But the Kingdom readily acknowledged his abilities and his conviction, and threw its full support behind him. Maybe he plans on usurping power for himself. Not likely. He's worked tirelessly to rebuild the church and state, and to shore up the royal family's position. Lining his pockets from the state coffers, then? Not the slightest chance. Rather, he's got all the other higher-ups worried he's working himself to death. Then what's he after? Hmm. Maybe there is no ulterior motive. Maybe he is our shepherd. Whatever the case, if he hadn't shown up when he did three years ago, Midgan would be a smoking ruin. Greetings, Magilu's Menagerie. You've come to exactly the right place. You must be a Bloodwing. What do you want? You already know about the Code Red demons, right? The really strong demons the Abbey wants gone? Yeah. Would you ever consider hunting them down for us? We'll reward you properly. Reward? Why pay us when the Abbey would do it for free? It's complicated. The Abbey is calculating in their deployments, especially where Code Red demons are concerned. I get it. They'll only act if they determine the demon would cause more harm than the losses they'd incur in battling it. That does seem logical. But sometimes, people have lost a loved one to such a demon. Or sometimes, they have a connection to the person the demon used to be. Wherever there's a Code Red demon, you can bet there are people willing to pay good money to have it killed. <laughs> and let me guess. That's where the blood wings come in. Exactly. If you defeat a demon and report back to my comrades, they'll make sure you're well compensated. All right, I understand. That's fine. No sense. If you get results, let us know. That being said, I'd feel guilty if I didn't help out at least a little, so... Those blood wings are definitely a rough crowd. To be fair, things are never that straightforward when you're dealing with demons. All that matters is that there's something in it for us if we hunt those Code Red demons. The only thing better than fighting formidable foes is getting paid for it. Just remember that these Code Red demons are tough enough to make the Abbey shiver. We should talk to those Bloodwings before considering any of the marks. Yeah, and we better remember to upgrade our equipment. Right. Laffy said. What is it, Rokuro? Mabo Curry. Huh? Oh. <laughs> You're an interesting one. You like Mabo Curry that much, huh? It smells good. And it's creamy and kind of spicy. 
eating it made me feel nice. I'd say you love it then. Do all Malakim have such an appetite? Each has their own tastes. Some eat a lot, some eat a little. What do you like, Aizen? Drinks, I suppose. What else? Uh, pretty much just drinks. Don't you like anything else? Is it a problem if I don't? No. I'm just wondering. For me, it's drinks and candied sweet potatoes. That's where you boil strips of sweet potato in oil and then coat them in sugar, right? Yeah, I never get tired of them. So you like to drink, but you've also got a sweet tooth? Yeah. Is that so strange? No. Candied sweet potatoes? Sounds good. Uh, there's nothing to be ashamed of. It's just a sign that you're alive, remember? Right. You better be ready. Your style is really unique. Just wait until I pull out the good stuff. Sorry to cut you down. Yeah. 